New safeguards are coming for sunscreens, but this doesn't mean current sunscreens are toxic and you need to avoid them. This is just part of how regulations are making safe products even safer, because safe for medications is a really high bar. A similar thing happened in the EU a few years ago, and it looks like the new limits for two ingredients they're going to be based on the same effects seen in rat studies. These were chosen specifically because they're really minor and not that concerning, but they could signal a step towards health problems, kind of like a low number on a blood test. For oxybenzone, they fed it to pregnant rats and then they saw a shorter distance between the asterisks and the cherries in unborn male rats. For homosalate, it's a bunch of small effects like increased kidney weight. They work out an amount that shouldn't cause these effects and then essentially they divide it by 100. And that's the amount allowed if someone applies a lot of sunscreen every day. So there is a massive buffer between the new limits and actual kidney disease or effects on unborn babies. It's like buffers on buffers on buffers. That's why the risk is still low with current products. They had a massive safety buffer with the old limits. So it's not like they need to go out and recall products, just like in the EU, we'll just see sunscreens change over the next few years. So if sunscreens are safe, why the new safeguards? Well, the TGA looks after millions of people, they limit risks to really small numbers, usually one in 100,000. On an individual level, that is a really low chance. But for millions of people using sunscreens their whole lives, it could be the thing that tips the scales towards kidney disease for a handful of people. So if there are effective sunscreens that don't have this risk, then forcing brands to change their formulas, that is going to be worth it.